Hey guys, Chris from the Review Cave here, and first of all, I'm sorry I didn't post a review for Black Clover last week. I had some stuff going on, and I kind of forgot about um, scheduling a recording session for that previous chapter. I also have one, f I, I, there's also one for One Piece that'll probably be up around the same time. But uh, for now, just wanted to say I'm sorry about that, and this video will be a double review from chapters 254 of last week and this week's chapter 255 for Black Clover, especially since I can, I do believe I can actually weave these two together in a single video. Been a while since uh, scheduling problems caused me to do a double review, but I believe things are going to go back on schedule, hopefully. So, and Black Clover's not going to be on break next week, so that's honestly really great. But, get on to the video. Let's get this started. In, starting with chapter 254. So in chapter 253, we see that Sekre was actually part of their plan to seal away Vanika once she uses up a specific amount of her demon power. She reaches, she reached 70% in the previous chapter. And we start this chapter off with Sekre starting to use her, her strongest sealing magic to try and seal away Vanika and Megicula. But, all of a sudden, the sealing doesn't work. And then, and then, um, uh, Noel, Sacre, and even Vanika, and sorry, not Vanika, and Undine get hit by a large burst of the of curse magic, undoing the ceiling. And when we and when we cut back to Vanika, she half her body is full on is covered in black marks, or just pitch black, which shows that Megicula has actually. Full, pretty much possessed her. This is this is shown. Megicula comes out of Vanika and pretty much possesses half her body. Hell, she Vanika is still conscious at this point and is having a full blown conversation of on Megicula. I'm like, why do you have to interfere and stuff like that? But here's the thing: Megicula showing up like that, and with how Vanika looks now with the whole half demon possession thing, that is just creepy, and I love it. Because if you're going to have your characters uh, be possessed by these demonic beings, then of course, if they come to the forefront, it's going to look creepy. I mean, it was scary when Asta was starting to lose control of his demon power when he fought Dante. But seeing Vanika, who basically had control over up to 70% of their demon's power, and having that demon ma practically manifest in her body and actually start talking to people... With that appearance, it it really does sell on how truly on how uh, I can't find the right word ominous ominous how ominous this is, which Tabata has done a great job building up these demons. It's something that I really do enjoy when it comes to storytelling and talking about this part of the Black Clover universe. And as Vanika and Megicula actually do end up doing their conversation, we get a good idea of Megicula's personality. Now, it's not confirmed whether or not Megicula is male or female. So I'm just going to say female since Megicula is part of Vanika. And uh, that'll be easier until I get it, and, and, un, unless the, the demons don't have an actual gender. Which, eh, that's fine. It's, it's not a problem. It just makes, just for sake of simplicity reasons... In case I get it wrong, let me know in the comments if I get this wrong so I can talk about it, so I can say it better in future videos when it comes to this. But yeah, so one thing is that as Megicula, Megicula's personality is like, like, she likes toying with people. It's kind of sadistic in a way. And it does kind of fit with the fact that Megicula is able to use curse magic. So with the idea of curse magic, she Megicula enjoys experimenting and messing with people through these curses. See, almost like a deranged scientist in a way, or magician, or a researcher, stuff like that. As this conversation is going on, we cut back to Undine, who is calling out to Loba Chica all injured, and it turns out she's been cursed by Megicula in that instant, like I just mentioned. And this is pretty much causing her to break down, because Undine was there for her, the one that was closest to Lola Pachika, and she was about to start crying and call out to her, but then the, when, when Sith Megicula came out and, it started to, and starts to approach Lola Pachika, her curse activates. Now, one thing I do like, I didn't mention this at the start, as they were trying to see if the ceiling worked, 
They wanted to see, because if, if the sewing worked, all of Megiculo's curses would have disappeared. All those enemies would be able to get killed, or they would just die off immediately, and more importantly, Lola Pachika's curse would have disappeared. Her curse did not disappear, which helped show that Megiculo was not sealed away, and then Megiculo broke out using curse warding, ma curse, uh, curse warding magic decay world. Which is honestly pretty damn cool, because it can't a lot of the power a lot of power, and even at half strength, Megiculo was strong enough to take out uh, Lola Pachika's strongest spell and break through Zekrae's curse magic. But back on track, Megiculo starts to approach Vanika, uh, Lola Pachika, a curse reacts, and she is in immense pain. Starts crying out. And honestly, Va um, uh, since he won't be able to move, he's not much of a, th a threat anymore, uh, Megiculo is trying to, basically saying that, you know, Maybe we should just kill her right now. Vanika is still very um, uh, enthusiastic about fighting Lola Pachika. But after seeing how she's breaking down and isn't really in it for the fight anymore, she just says she's had it. And just goes to try and kill her with her blood magic. But then Noelle gets up in her Valkyrie armor, which I have to commend Noelle for her persistence. Because throughout the, the story, Noelle has, in fact, kept getting stronger and has proven how much of a capable character she is and a capable fighter. So, seeing as how she gets up, uh, Vanika is all for fighting. But it's like, I'm, it's over already for her. And that her power, her power, she's not strong enough or the power difference between us is too great. And she starts launching blood spears, blood, blood like blood, Lance attacks towards Noelle as she charges towards Vanika. But Vanika, but Vanika didn't see is that Noelle, as she was getting hit, she used her Valkyrie armor to block specific portions of the attack so she can avoid any fatal injuries. So the fact that Noelle can in fact manipulate her armor to that degree of, to that degree, that degree and that precisely, really shows how far she's come as a magic knight and how much progress she's made in controlling her magic. So, props to Noelle, because even though she's outclassed right now, she is still fighting to the bitter end. And as she charges forward, uh, Megigula is almost, it's almost like Megigula is, um, uh, they're actually pretty shocked over Noelle managing to get through their attack. And as this happens, Noelle says that what they're doing should never be forgiven, and then, uses her Valkyrie Spear and pierces Vanika and Megikula. And that's how Chapter 254 ends. Now, Chapter 255 is even better. But So, again, from, the, from this Chapter 254, we Megikula pops up. We see how this happens. Plus, the eye patch Vanika had is gone. So, that could have been the seal for Megikula to stay in. It is undone once Vanika reaches 70%. Which Megillah like did state that by the time they reached seventy percent, uh, Megillah's magic was already in effect, and Megillah was already starting to come out. So, yeah, that is good attention to detail there. Now, one thing I need to say is that we cut back in chapter two fifty five. Noel just pierced um, uh, Vanika and Megillah. Now, the one thing I do have to say is that, oh man. What Noelle does next after piercing her is just freaking amazing. So Noelle tries to do a point blank Sea Dragon's Roar against Vanika and Megicula. And I just want to say the artwork here just looks freaking amazing. But I'm not going to show it here because it, it's going to have a glare and I don't know if I'll be able to do it. But uh, then Vanika counters with the Red Beast with her blood magic. The Red Beast attack that she did like two chapters ago. So, one thing I do have to say is that it basically just nullified Sea Dragon's roar, and Noelle started just started to collapse because she basically put in all her, as much magic as she possibly could for this. And as there's, as Vanika is saying, your attacks aren't going to do anything, and that it's pointless. She starts to spit up blood, and realizes just how strong this girl is. She then asks for Noelle's name. Noelle stated Noelle Silva, and here's the thing. Vanika changed her mind about killing Lolo Pachika. You might be asking, her mission was 
to go and kill little Pachika because there was no point in her being around anymore. And with her gone, it would make things a lot easier for the Spade Kingdom to invade Heart and Clover Kingdoms. But, her reason for this is because they're going to take Lula Pachika back to the Spade Kingdom and keep her alive, and even torture her, for all we know. Just because, since Noelle claimed her to be her precious friend, maybe she'll get a whole lot stronger through her anger for wanting to save her. We then see that Vonica remembers Aesir Silver, Noelle's mom, in her previous battle against her. So, if she even mentions that no, that Aesir Silva, Silva got stronger after Vonica threatened, to, threat, um, threatened a child. Remember, all this, Vonica is like twisted, maniacally laughing with the maniacal look in her face. She's like, she got so strong. And stuff like that. It was before um, uh, even cursing her. And, and it does kind of help her own thing with like, Noelle will get stronger if we take a little bit chica hostage. And hell, um, uh, Medicula is imp is kind of fascinated by by Vonica's way of thinking, and that is something I really do gotta give props to because it's basically calling out the common trope in any shonen series where a main character or the protagonist, if someone they care about is in danger, they will get immensely stronger either in the middle of a battle or between a specific point from their last battle against this opponent up to the next one. So. Props on you, Habata, for calling out on that trope and making it into a thing in the series, a self-aware thing in the series. So, I really, really, really like that. So, after that, we cut back to um, uh, Mimosa fighting the tongue guy. And he's like, Lady Vonica, we're leaving already? Please wait a little bit. I almost got this girl licked, and then she's like, she has no use for them anymore. She has no use for you people anymore. So, which means, so she activates curse warding magic, exploding life. To the shock of everyone, it's a curse bomb. She placed a curse bomb in all of her dark disciples to be set off at any moment. Since they're taking a little bit chica, there's no reason for, them to, for her to stay in the heart kingdom anymore. So she activates this, and this is going on as Charmy, Mimosa, Luck. And Gaja and Leo are fighting the Dark Disciples that just got brought back to life due to that immortality curse. So with that, Vonica's, Vonica ends up activating and is like, Bye bye, Noel. I really will be waiting for you in the Snake Kingdom. Get a whole lot stronger. Momo, uh, Noel screams out Vonica's name in pure anger, and just like that, all of the curse bombs go off at once. And in this nice two-page spread, in my, in my opinion, that shows the passing, the, the passing of time. And let me say this. Everyone finding their disciples got hit with this pretty much point-blank rage. Mimosa, Luck, possibly Charming. Actually, we didn't even see Charming and Leo in this, but it's kind of implied that they're still fighting regardless. And Gaja, they're pretty much all hit point-blank. Same with Noelle and, Pot, and pretty much Sacre as well. Since she was out, um, uh, knocked down in that fight. So, with that... We see it's implied that the sound kind of tra traverses the land a little bit. We cut back to Yami and Dante's battle. With the first thing we see is Yami actually slashing Dante again across the chest after he just recovered. Which, honestly, I like Dante's reaction to this. So, okay. Oh, okay. He says that I do hate this. Tr this let me read this line. Let me just read this line real quick. Okay, so more here. This is what he, said. he as he's laughing after getting hit with um, uh, Yami's attack. He's like, "More damage. You're truly magnificent. I do hate this ugly magic, but okay, fine. I'll sh I'll show it to you, Yami Sukihiro, as a special favor. The true power of a human devil host. And okay, now that is just." Ominous in general, especially with how insanely sinister and insanely sinister and and foreboding this is, especially with how uh, Dante is laughing so maniacally in this moment. And then Yami, he's just standing there, getting ready, and like, great. Then I'll show you the power of a normal human. And that's how the chapter ends. So.
Real quick, chapter 254 and 255 is the conclusions of the battle between Noel and Megicula with the help of Lopa Chica, Mimosa, and Zecre. Lopa Chica gets taken by Vonica in an attempt to try and make Noel stronger for her next fight. You know, classic shonen stuff. When she, Vonica then causes her Dark Disciples to explode, point blank rage at everyone that's fighting them, in huge explosions from what we see. So, yeah, I mean, I, I doubt any of our characters died in that, but they're definitely in, tragically injured, gravely injured. I, I'm going with that, because I doubt Tabata's going to just kill them all off like that. Maybe one person will die that isn't a black bolt to, like, get everyone out of there. Definitely Gaja survived in the well and Mimosa, and Sakura, and Luck. But anyway... The fact that we ended this chapter off cutting back to Yami and Dante's fight and Dante getting ready to show something that he himself doesn't really like, a magic that he himself doesn't really like relying on. What could that magic be? Lucifer. It could be using Lucifer's power, going up to 70%, maybe even more, and allowing Lucifer to take, to, to manifest in his own body even more. It's allowing him to use both magics. Lucifer's magic and his gravity magic. Oh, man. This is going to be great because the next, from what we can tell, the next chapter is going to be the actual conclusion to Dante and, and Yami's fight. I'll, I'll be honest. Since they need world tree magic and dark magic to use their, to use their plan to activate the, the Clefroth tree to open up the world to the demons, Yami has to lose this fight. But Yami, even though Yami's having a hard time fighting against Dante, who's pretty much at 60% at this point, 60% of Yami's fighting, is holding his own. Granted, he is struggling a bit. If Dante goes even higher, Yami will have will end up having to lose, because they need Yami alive. Thus helping inspiring the rest of the Black Bulls to get even more powerful, so they can raid the Spade Kingdom and get back their captain and take down the Dark Triad. Also, we could, at this, get the actual identity of the, of the Black Bull member that is spying on the Spade Kingdom. I want to know! It's been chapters since that reveal of a Black Bull spying on the Spade Kingdom. I want to see who it is. I want to see who it is. Oh, man. I really want to see who it is. But, with all that said and done, these have been two great chapters. Tabata has been knocking out of the park constantly, despite... The chapter's being short at 15 pages. I know I keep saying this every single review, but I do like how he's still putting out these chapters and and how he's doing all this with less with less pages to work with and putting enough detail in the artwork, the the the, the choreography and the action and the actual um, story. It's just it's just really impressive, and I do admire it. So. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video, re me reviewing these last two chapters of Black Clover. Don't worry, I will do my very best to make sure I make things weekly again, and make sure I don't do these double reviews and skip out on weekly videos again. I will try my best not to do this anymore. But, yeah. I will do my very best, because I do like making these videos. I do like talking about these. So, and when the people in the comments talk, um, I'll respond to this and either correct me or agree with my points, it's really nice to do. I do read the comments, so please. If there's anything you want me to talk about in, in regards to manga, because remember, I finished Promise Neverland, before, uh, Promise Neverland is over, so I'm looking for a new manga to review weekly. So let me know in the comments down below. If there's anything particular like with Shonen Jump or any other manga, let me know. If there's like any type of anime you want me to review, let me know again. Like and subscribe to the channels to show that you really like me doing this content and you want, want me to want to see more. And also uh, follow me on Twitter and Instagram at the official review cave. Links to those accounts will be in the in my channel descriptions. And hope you guys have an awesome day.